Okay, so quick disclaimer before we start today's video because I know YouTube likes to tussle. So I have to change today's video title a couple times because I used a word that YouTube does not like and I also said this word in this video a couple of times but I also had to bleep it out just because I didn't want to upset YouTube. So because of this, I have decided to start a Patreon where I'm going to be posting the unfiltered version of videos on Patreon because there's some things that I can simply not see on YouTube because it just goes against their guidelines. It sucks but it is what it is. So basically on my Patreon, I'm just going to be posting videos earlier and I'm also going to be posting the unfiltered version of videos and maybe once in a while I'll post videos there that I can't talk about here because let's say it's too explicit for YouTube. Anyways, I'm going to make a post about it later on in this week just explaining it further. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that and if you're not, totally fine. You can stay on YouTube. We can kiki it up here as well. But yeah, so now let's get back into the video where my hair is going to grow 10 inches longer. In a world where pop culture reigns supreme and societal expectations loom large, the journey of an artist is anything but straightforward. From Disney darling to chart-topping sensation, the evolution of artists like Olivia Rodrigo's sparks conversations that delve deeper into the intersections of fame, artistic freedom, and societal norms. She kick-started her career following in the footsteps of icons like Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, and Demi Lovato. And now fast forward to today, she has Grammys, she has a huge following, she has millions of followers, and now she's on her first world tour. So Olivia's doing great for herself, but of course with fame comes the critics and the people who just keep yapping. But a lot of people are not happy with the way that Olivia is conducting herself for her tour. They don't like the outfits, they don't like the way she's singing, they think she's cussing too much. They don't like the way that she's presenting herself. She's not being a good role model to the children. Like, Olivia, think about the children. So this whole discourse with Olivia has inspired me to create today's video and has also inspired me to create a video talking about the phase. And I will elaborate on this further later in the video. But before any of you Olivia fans try to attack me, let me just make it clear I am not calling her Watch the video and you'll know what I'm trying to say. Thank you very much. And also, since I'm on YouTube, I don't think I can keep saying the word. So I'm going to say O oh, instead of saying you know, I'm not trying to disrespect YouTube. I know they have some guidelines in place, so I'm not trying to get them mad. But yeah, so I'm going to be saying O oh, instead of the word. I hope you know what I'm trying to say. I mean, you know, we, you know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say, girl. But now that we have all of that out of the way, let's get into today's video. Yeah. But before we get into today's video, we have a quick word from today's sponsor, which I'm really excited about, and I hope you guys are excited about too, because you know what? Let me not talk too much. Let's get into the let's, let's get into the video. So I don't think I've ever mentioned this on this channel, but I am a university student and I'm gonna be graduating this year. And I should be excited because I won't have to take exams anymore. I won't have to write 12 page long essays. I won't have to wake up for eight. 8 a.m. classes but to be honest I am so nervous to be officially done with school because this will be the first time in my life where I'm not in school and I don't know how to process that if I'm being honest. I mean like I'm already an adult but now it feels like I'm really an adult and I feel like I have to have my whole life figured out right now or else I'm gonna be a failure for the rest of my life. The pressure to have everything figured out right now has been taking a toll on me and I've honestly just been ignoring it but every day is a day closer closer to the day I graduate, so I cannot keep ignoring it, unfortunately. <laughs> That's why I'm really happy today to introduce today's video sponsor, which is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online platform that connects you with a certified therapist who is equipped to listen and give you valuable, unbiased advice. And you can manage it all right from your phone or computer through video chatting, messaging, or phone calls. It's the simplest way to kickstart a conversation with a therapist. To get started, simply head over to their website using my link, betterhelp.com slash NK's world. And once you're there, you're gonna answer a few questions and and BetterHelp will pair you with a seasoned professional who has years of experience with helping people battle similar struggles that you're going through. Allow BetterHelp to connect you with a therapist who can provide you with support all the way from the convenience of your home. And take advantage of a special discount on your first month using BetterHelp. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the video. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Part one. Okay, so who is Olivia Rodrigo? Let's start this video with a brief description on who Miss Olivia is, because you know that's how I like to start my videos. Everyone we talk about on this channel is human. Well, most of them, some of them are not, but everyone we talk about here is human. So I always want to humanize them before we start talking about the discourse surrounding them. But without further ado, let's talk about Miss Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. So Olivia Isabel Rodrigo entered the world February 20th, 2003 in Murata, California, before her family settled in Tamicula? Girl, Tamic Tamacu. Wait. Okay, before her family settled in Temecula, California. <laughs> so her upbringing revolved around her parents. So her mother is Jennifer, she's a teacher, and her father is Chris, and he is a family and marriage therapist. So you know, like a typical suburban type family vibes. Nothing too crazy. And with a blend of German, Irish, and Filipino heritage from her mother and her father, Olivia proudly identifies as a biracial Filipino American. But despite her pride with her heritage, she has admitted previously that she struggled with accepting herself. She stated in an interview with Clash, me and my other more ethnic friends grew up in this world where we thought that being a white girl would be better and you'd be happier and people would like you more. And I felt this in my bones. <laughs> I was like, girl, Olivia, I feel you. And I feel like a lot of us, like a lot of us who identify as a person of color, even though person of color is very broad, like we all have very different experiences. I feel like a lot of us had that perception of reality just because of the time you were born. I feel like it's better for younger kids nowadays because we're more diverse and we're more accepting of different races. But back in the day, Mm -mm. All of us wanted to be white. Um, okay, not all of us, but I think a good majority of us thought our lives would be better if we were white. I mean, I hope all of us are happy with who we are. I'm happy, Olivia seems happy, and I hope you're happy too. Amen. But let's not get too off track before we have a crying session. <laughs> so let's get back to Olivia. Anyways, as a child, Olivia was introduced to alternative rock by her mother and her mother introduced her to bands like No Doubt, The White Stripes, and Smashing Pumpkins. And this exposure ignited Olivia's passion in music from a very young age. And by the age of five, she was already getting singing lessons and she was competing in local talent shows. Songwriting also became another outlet for Olivia's creativity. Well, before she reached the double digits in age. At nine years old, she started piano lessons, which she said she hated, but eventually she started to love it and she realized how important it was to her songwriting because playing the piano helped her understand music better and it helped her write songs better. And I have to say that I am jealous of Olivia because I have always wanted music lessons. Like I wish my parents enrolled me in something, like just something. <laughs> Honestly, even gymnastics would have been fine. Like I could have been the next Simone Biles, but no. I'm up here, sitting here with no talent. But you know what? It's fine. There's a lot of talentless people in this world, so I guess I'll just hang out with them then. But alongside Olivia's musical pursuits, she also harbored a love for acting. By the time she turned six, she was enrolled in acting classes and began auditioning for professional roles, often requiring her family to make the 90 mile journey to Los Angeles. But even though the journey was long and Olivia experienced several setbacks, she remained determined to pursue her passion. Even her parents offered her the option to stop auditioning, but she was like, nope, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna keep going because this is what I want. And that determination and perseverance has gotten her to where she is right now. So let's talk about Olivia's acting real quick because her acting is really what put her on the map. At the age of 10, Olivia secured the leading role in An American Girl, Grace Stirs Up Success, and that was released in 2015. But two years later, she was casted as Paige in the Disney Channel series called Bizarre Dark Work. Bizarre Vark. I don't know how to pronounce that. I never watched the show, but I'll put the name up and you'll see how it's spelt. Anyways, Olivia started to really make a name for herself when she landed the role of Nene Roberts in High School Musical, the musical, the series. Why is the name so long? And this premiered in November, 2019, and she was only 15 years old at this time. And while working on High School Musical, she continued to work on her songwriting skills. She wrote the song, I Am More, which she shared on her Instagram. And this actually caught the attention of the show's producers who invited her to write a song for her character in the series, High School Musical. So she wrote the song, All I Want for High School Musical, and it actually ended up becoming a standout hit for the show. And it even charted on the Billboard 
Billboard Hot 100 back in 2020, and it actually garnered attention from multiple record labels. But she ended up signing with Jeffen Records instead of choosing the traditional route, which would have been to sign with Hollywood Records because a lot of famous celebrities that were in Disney, they usually ended up signing with Hollywood Records before leaving Hollywood Records and then signing with a different label. By the way, Hollywood Records is the record label for Disney Channel. Anyways, the American producer Dan Negro, it's spelled N-I-G-R-O, like Negro. <laughs> Like, I, I don't want y'all thinking I'm saying that word. Okay, we're just gonna call him Dan. So the American producer Dan, who has worked with Taylor Swift, Kylie Migo, and Conan Gray, reached out to Olivia after discovering her on Instagram. And together, Olivia and Dan recorded Driver's License and they released the song in January 2021. And the rest is history. The emotionally charged breakup ballad skyrocketed to the top of the Billboard Hot 100, catapulting 17-year-old Olivia into the record books as the youngest performer to achieve this feat. The song quickly gained traction on TikTok with countless users lip-syncing and creating cover videos for the song. And back in January 2021, you could not escape that song. Like, that song was everywhere. As soon as I opened up TikTok, it was all over my For You page. But the song really had to grow on me. Like, I didn't love it immediately I was like eh like it's a good song but like it didn't like move me but honestly I just think it's because I never experienced heartbreak at that time I was like yeah I can't relate because I already know how to drive already <laughs> yeah like I just couldn't really relate to it so I'm like yeah yeah it's fine <laughs> In 2021, Olivia followed up Driver's License with the song Deja Vu, which also did very well. And also Good For You is another song she released the same year. And that song also did well. So this proved that she was not just a one hit wonder. And I feel like that's an issue that a lot of artists and even creators have too. Obviously it's amazing when one of your, one of the works that you produce goes viral. That's amazing. But then when it goes viral, I feel like it kind of like scares you because you want to be able to top it but you're scared you can't top it so like it can i guess create um what's that word writer's block and affect your creativity and i am nowhere near olivia's level of fame and i don't know if i can function if i had that level of fame <laughs> but anyways i am well aware that i have a video that has reached over a million views and i'm super grateful super happy for that but when i reached a million views i was like dang like is this gonna be like the video that everyone knows me from can i ever top it can i create a space where people are continuously coming back to my videos and like all my videos not just that one video so yeah it definitely kind of made me scared but i was like you know what i'm just gonna keep on posting and time will tell and you know i would say I'm doing pretty good, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I just thought I would add my little two cents into it since you guys like to hear my personal stories sometimes. Let's fast forward to 2023 when Olivia started to really show her growth as an artist and also started to get people's panties in a bunch. Well, mostly parents' panties in a bunch, but let's talk. So in late June 2023, Olivia dropped the song Vampire, which is the lead single from her sophomore effort called Guts. The track swiftly ascended to the number one spot on the Hot 100, so we can see that she is quite popular and she does have a solid fan base. And come September 2023, Olivia released her album Guts in its entirety and the album did extremely well. I think every single song was at least a top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100. And because Olivia is so popular, of course, people always have things to say. So let's talk about these people who are complaining and let's talk about why they are mad and let's see if they are valid in their frustrations or if they just need to shut the F up. Let's get into it. Part two, why everyone's mad. So to promote her second album, Olivia has embarked on a world tour, which I have seen all over my Instagram Explore page and also my For You page on TikTok. And she's a vibe. She's a very energetic performer. And you know, that's what I want to see. Anyways, parents do not seem to like the way that Olivia is conducting herself. So let's talk about it. For months, many young children have been begging their parents to take them to see Olivia live on her world tour for Guts. And despite the hefty average ticket price of $200, a lot of parents have relented and they have taken their kids to see Olivia. But now that they have taken their kids to see Olivia, they are not happy. <laughs> a lot of parents are realizing that the concert is not intended for kids and not made for kids and now they're mad. So there are videos of Olivia on stage sticking out her tongue, which the parents do not seem to like. Her outfits also consist of very short rompers or short shorts and crop tops paired with tights or fishnets. And and also her dance moves, I guess one can say are inappropriate. But due to all the things that I just mentioned right now, a lot of parents are mad at her because they're like, your audience is mostly young girls. 
what are you doing like this is just completely inappropriate so a lot of parents are just not messing with Olivia right now and it seems like Olivia is going through the same trap that a lot of Disney stars have gone through and basically all of them first the star comes out all young and innocent and everyone's like oh my god like they're so cute they're such good role models they're perfect but then they grow up and they leave Disney and once they leave their show on Disney they embark on their solo career and because they are grown up they want to explore their maturity through their music so they have maybe cuss words in their songs now and they show their bodies more and that makes people very uncomfortable and very mad because they want them to stay the same they want them to be the perfect role model for their nine-year-old daughter like what's going on with Olivia is nothing new we have seen this time and time and time again however this situation with Olivia underscores a concerning trend that has been exacerbated after the COVID-19 lockdown and that is the trend of bringing really young kids to concerts taking young kids to concerts is totally totally fine but don't take them to like an adult concert and expect it to be geared towards children like kids are kids so like taking them to like a two hour long concert a three hour long concert I don't think that's the smartest thing to do like if you want to take your kids to a concert I feel like make it make sense like take them to a Disney concert a Nickelodeon concert or like I don't know Jojo Siwa you know what I mean Don't take them to like uh, Olivia Rodrigo's concert and expect them and expect the content to be geared towards them because Olivia is a 21 year old woman. Like why on earth would she want to be making content for nine year olds? Like yes, that's very possible. Some people do want to do that, but for the most part, a lot of 21 year olds don't want to do that. They do not want to be role models for nine year olds. Like this girl just became legal. She wants to have her fun. And I just want to show a video that a TikToker made because I wholeheartedly agree with her and I feel like she could not have said it better. So let's play her video real quick. Commercial opinion coming your way. Um, not all concerts are made for your nine year old. As a frequent concert goer and someone who saw Olivia Rodrigo the first time she toured, I would like to add on to this TikTok. This screener basically said, hey, I don't think Olivia Rodrigo needs to tone down her show for children. Before I turned 18, I think I went to two concerts total, and one of them was One Direction with my mom when I was 12. And at the time, One Direction did not have an explicit discography, like, at all. No explicit songs on this album or on this album. These were the two albums that were out when I saw One Direction with my mother. Guts, which is Olivia Rodrigo's newest album, has multiple explicit songs. And so does Sour, which was out when I saw her in 2022. Her concert was so fun, she sounds great live, and I'm glad that we saw her before she won Grammys because now she is more expensive to see. And I remember when we were waiting in line to go to her concert because the venue that we went to has mostly general admission, which is standing room. And at the venue that we went to, which is the Anthem in Washington DC, they give you a wristband if you're over 21, and if you're under 21, they take a sharpie and they put an X on the back of your hand. And my friends and I were all like 21, 22 at the time. We are older than Olivia Rodrigo is. And I remember making a joke to my friends. I was like, for every wristband that I've seen, I've seen 10 X's on people's hands. We saw a lot of moms with their kids. Some dads too, some dads. And I remember thinking to myself when I saw all these kids, I'm like, mm, I don't know if this is like the best concert for them. Like, it's not horrible, but she, she swears sometimes, you know, like she talks about drinking. Personally, I think that just because Olivia Rodrigo used to be on a children's show several years ago doesn't mean that she should have to cater to a child audience for her whole life. So it sounds like a lot of young girls are going to Olivia's concert. They're going with their parents, so at least they're with their parents, but clearly the parent is not doing enough research because this girl is cut, like Olivia is cussing. And now many parents are mad because they realize they should have done more research before taking their kid to the concerts. And instead of taking accountability, they're too busy out here blaming Olivia. So that's A1. Parenting. And with the insane popularity of Taylor Swift and her Eras tour, a lot of parents have grown accustomed to attending tours like Taylor's, which is characterized by friendship bracelets and camaraderie. But let's not mistake that for the norm. A lot of concerts are simply not like that at all. And I've never been to a Taylor Swift concert before, and I've never been to the Eras tour, but I low-key do want to go though, I can't lie. <laughs> but even my friends clown me when I say that, and like I know like some of y'all might be like, you want to see Taylor Swift? But like back in the day, I used to always listen to Taylor Swift, like Love Story, You Belong With me our song there's another one too i forget oh yeah mine like i honestly like when i was younger i loved taylor swift but like now that i'm older i don't listen to her as often but again i've never been to the concert before but i have seen clips of her eras tour on it tiktok and instagram and even youtube as well and i wouldn't say the concert is geared towards children but children can definitely watch it at least from the clips that i have seen
However, her concert is like three hours long. So I'm like, which kid is actually gonna sit through a three hour concert and like stay focused for that long? And what I've noticed is that a lot of parents do seem to compare Olivia to Taylor because Olivia has stated that Taylor is her idol and her inspiration. But we need to remember like these, there are two different people. And like, I would say that Olivia resembles um, Haley Williams from Paramount, pa Paramount. Paramore. Paramore. <laughs> what am I saying? I think it's Paramore. You guys know the band Paramore. I feel like Olivia replicates that energy more than she replicates Taylor Swift's energy. Anyways, the backlash from parents against Olivia's provocative dance moves serves as a reminder that most concerts are not tailored for young children, despite the evolving culture of live performances that may suggest otherwise. If an artist is not specifically made for children, do not expect to go to their concert and to have family-friendly concerts vibes at the concert. It's common sense no comment anymore. And can I mention that her dance moves are not even provocative at all? At least in my opinion, they're not. But maybe that's because I'm accustomed to so much worse. <laughs> So I don't know if that's actually a good thing, but I'm grown, so it's fine. And even before Guts dropped, which is her latest project, her debut album called Sour still had explicit songs, including Driver's License, which is her breakout single. I have not seen Olivia live, but I honestly don't really know too many of her songs, so I doubt I will end up seeing her live anytime soon. But from the videos I've seen, I can already tell that the, the concert is not meant for children. But I do like the whole vibe of the concert. I like how she's giving energy, like she's not lazy she's performing the mic is on the mic is on i don't like no lazy performer like if i'm gonna pay give me a hundred percent but her concert just has like this carefree vibe like you know like the <laughs> like it just makes you want to do like the white girl dance like you know like the dance where you like flip your hair side to side and you just like jump up up and down <laughs> And I hope I'm not offending any white girls right now <laughs> because I actually love the dance. Like, I feel like that dance is just like a freeing move. If you ever feel stressed, just put on, you know, what's the song? Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield. Bedingfield? You know what I mean. Just put that song Unwritten by Natasha and just do the dance. Like, you're going to feel free and the stress is just going to leave your body. <laughs> But let me know what you think. Do you think because Olivia has a large fan base of young girls, should she tone it down for them or should she just live her best life? I know I told you my opinion already, so I hope I didn't influence you. And if you disagree, please let me know. Just like write it down below. I'm not gonna attack you, I promise. But I'm definitely curious to know your thoughts on Miss Olivia and the tea that's surrounding her. Part three. Okay, so now let's talk about the O phase. I hope I am making it pretty clear that I am not calling Olivia an O or any of the ladies that I mentioned in today's video. When I say the O phase, I am talking about the phase that most female celebrities go through when they decide to be more mature with their image and music. During this era, there are usually called O's by the public and they face a lot of backlash for being too sexual. And in this section, we are going to be talking about the O phase in terms of celebrities, not like the actual O phase. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I hope it does because I could definitely make a separate video just focusing on the O phase as it is without celebrities and all that type of ish into it. You know what I mean? Anyways, I'm talking too much, so let's get into the section, yeah. But before we talk about the O phase pertaining to female celebrities, let's just quickly define what it means. So the O phase is a term that's used to describe a period in someone's life, typically in their late tweens or early 20s, but some of y'all, it'd be lasting your whole life. No shade, all facts. Where they explore their sexuality and embrace casual relationships without commitment. You can call a man or a woman a O, but the term is usually associated with women and it's used as an insult to make women feel less than for having multiple sexual partners. For some, the O phase is seen as a time of empowerment where they can take charge of their bodies, learn their bodies, and they feel free and they have absolutely no judgment. They're just living their best life with no commitment and they're just living their life basically. That's how some people see the O phase as. But for others, it's often stigmatized and shamed, especially for a woman. Like the double standards are loud. So society tends to label women who embrace their sexuality as promiscuous or while men are often praised for the exact same behavior, like make it make sense. When women talk about their sexual experiences, whether it's in their music or just, you know, online or they're doing an interview, they will get cussed out. People will say that they're for the street, they're used up, they're what's, what do you call it? Like they're dirty dishes. Like people will call them all sorts of names. And this is really prominent in the music industry. Like, do you guys remember when WAP came out with Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion? That song had everyone 
everyone up in arms. Like people were ready to fight them because they thought it was way too vulgar. Like, nope, you cannot sing about your own body parts. Like that's unacceptable. Yes, I will admit that the song was very raunchy. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah, very raunchy. You know, they were talking. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm laughing, like I'm so immature. But yes, the song was very raunchy, but they're both grown, they are both consenting to what they wanna do, so who am I to judge? Like, I played that music too though, I was bumping it, I won't lie. But when male rappers rap about pussy or having sex, like no one bats an eye, they're like, oh, they're just a man, they're just doing what boys do. But anyways, as I said before, when it comes to female artists, especially Disney stars, they all go through the same thing, which I am calling the O phase. But remember, they are not O's. But Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, and Selena Gomez faced a lot of backlash once they left Disney Channel and embarked on their solo careers. And I would say that Miley faced the most backlash because her image was way more explicit and vulgar than the other girls. When Miley came out with We Can't Stop and Wrecking Ball, and when she performed with Robin Thicke at the 2013 VMAs, she had everyone mad. <laughs> they were not used to Miley's new look at all with her new short hair, her risque outfit. She was giving them old people a heart attack. <laughs> like she was no longer America's sweetheart. She was some crazy girl that they did not know and they did not recognize. And they were pissed because they wanted her to be Hannah Montana for the rest of her life. Anyways, at some point in a female artist's career, she is usually called out for being too sexual. And it's mostly prominent when the artist is younger and they're transitioning from maybe their teenage years to adulthood. However, it can also happen when they're way older too. Too. Like I remember back in 2014, Beyonce performed at the Grammys and she opened up the show singing her hit song Drunk in Love with her husband Jay-Z. And she was like 32 at this time, yet people were not feeling it. They're like, girl, you're a mother. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, a lot of parents just thought that her outfit and her performance in general was just too risque for TV and they were mad that their children were watching it. Instead of just using a remote and turning off the TV or changing the channel, they channeled their energy into Beyonce and were mad at her. One parent even wrote, watching the hashtag Grammys at 8 p.m. with my children, music lovers, performance by Beyonce and her lack of clothing, very inappropriate. She's a mom? Like girl, I hate when people try to tell women how to dress, especially when they're grown and especially when they're moms. They just feel like once you're a mom, your life is done. Like all you can offer is being a mom. You can't look cute. You can't look good. You can't dress like a bad bitch because apparently it's gonna hurt the children. Like. Hello? She's grown, so I don't know why this person or a lot of people felt the need to add their two cents when I bet you they don't even look that good like Beyonce. So I guess women can catch a break at any age, even when they're 20, 30, 40, they're probably still gonna get ridiculed for being too sexual. And I feel like this discourse with Olivia is only happening because she did come from Disney, so parents automatically assumed that her music would be geared toward the pre-teens of the world, but it's not. If you do your research, you'll easily see that it's not. And it's unfair for parents to expect her to keep up her image of being a Disney star because she's 21 years old now. Like when she was in Disney, she was a teenager. So of course, you know, she was a minor. She shouldn't be dressing a certain way, but now she is 21 years old. Ask a 21 year old, for the most part, they're not gonna wanna be seen as a role model for a bunch of eight year olds and nine year olds. At 21, you're young. You just wanna enjoy life, have fun, have no responsibilities to do anything. Like you're just free. So I honestly, I'm with Olivia. Like, I don't I don't want anyone to impose anything like that on me because yeah I love kids but I'm also for the F them kids movement like I'm young I don't want to have to tone myself down or present myself in a certain way so it's digestible for children like so you miss me with that. I don't even consider myself a role model for anyone, but I do try to be a good person. I try to do what's right, but I don't even want the pressure of being a role model, especially for very, very young children who are very impressionable. And I'm sure Olivia does not want that too. So that's why she's presenting herself in the way that she chooses to present herself in. But it's important to recognize that artists evolve and grow and their art reflects that journey. Olivia Rodrigo's is no exception and her music speaks to a generation navigating love, heartbreak, and self-discovery. And if we're being honest, Olivia is not even sexual at all. If these parents are calling her gross and explicit, I just wonder what they would say about Sexy Red. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. I appreciate you. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. Like, do you think Olivia is doing too much? Do you think that she should tone it down because her audience is mostly children? Or should she just live her best life, do what she wants? Like, period, because 
she grow? Let me know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna see you next week or in two weeks. You know the drill, so bye. bye. the backlash from parents against Olivia's provocative choreography girl choreograph choreography choreography the backlash from parents against Olivia's provocative choreograph choreography choreography